Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala with Audioholics, and we've got our friend Don Dunn from HD 2020 back with us shooting a video. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. Doing awesome. Good. So I want to talk to you guys about home networks and setting up a good network and why that's an important thing to do when you're doing home theater or any type of multimedia kind of uh, entertainment. So Don, why don't you give us an overview on what constitutes getting a good network in your home? Um, Network in the modern home is probably the centerpiece or the heart of the technology. So there's a several ways that people have home network networks now. One way is they call their ISP, the provider, mm -hmm. and they'll come out and they'll install a modem slash router and they'll put that at one location in the house. That serves most small homes pretty well. It covers a pretty good amount of area and for the amount of traffic that you're going to be using, it works pretty well on larger homes people have to go a little bit more elaborate. Sometimes they go to Best Buy and they'll buy one of these crazy routers with 37 antennas on it. <laughs> and it has some of the, the latest and greatest technology and it's $400. Or even now they have what's called a mesh network, Gene. Mm -hmm. And that's basically a small router that goes in where your service provider comes in. Then they have modules that are deployed throughout the house. And they'll actually take that signal and send the signal from one module to the other to the other, creating a spread and good coverage inside of a home. Of course, all these have limitations. Then well, this is done all wirelessly. This is done for Ethernet connected to NFS. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the next level is kind of what we did for your house is um, something quasi enterprise, more of a commercial type network where we actually take a enterprise grade router. We connect it to the um, provider's modem slash router. We eliminate the wireless signal on that. So it's basically subnetted. Then we go to a, a switch and we use what's called a PoE switch, which is power over Ethernet. That actually sends the power and the signal to multiple access points that we deploy within the home. We'll put them in uh, inside of closets in the ceiling or in a family room or in a hallway. And we do multiple access points within a home. What that does is allow a very nice spread of really solid wireless inside of a home. These systems are all incredibly stable. So they're not something you're having to reboot all the time. And they have a lot of connectivity, a lot of pass through and a lot of adjustment on them. When we're doing large scale automation systems, they're kind of a necessity. Right. Now in my home, we were actually run three wireless endpoints. Correct. We, we did three access points. Right. Three home. access points. We deployed them uh, randomly throughout the house, actually in areas that we thought would give the best coverage. We have one, Correct. That's, one that's in the family room, one that's in my wife's office, because obviously that's the most important room in the house to get all the billing and all the financing done. <laughs> the most important room. Yes. Or the and, kids. <laughs> right. And then we did another one um, uh, upstairs here in this theater room, and that actually covers me outside. This thing works so good, it actually covers me out in the backyard. So we, the, another thing that you guys did that I was actually surprised, when I built this house back in 2005, I did everything Cat5, because mm -hmm. that's what the standard was back in 2005. Mm -hmm. And you guys are like, no, we're going to upgrade that. And we pulled wire or cat six throughout the entire house. We did. What we was did. the point of doing that? What did we, um, what did we buy by going to cat six? It's just a better cable has more bandwidth. Um, some of the cables that you had weren't in ideal locations. So instead of trying to move those cables, we just went ahead. We don't even use cat five anymore. Right. Now that the price is kind of real similar to, to cat five, it's nice because you get a thicker cable you get a better quality build quality on it and you do get more bandwidth by using cat six and we use cat six for network. It can be used for telephone. We also use it for video distribution. We're able to, like we're doing in your master bedroom, HD we're able to T. send HD base T or right. um, IP HDMI video up to 330 feet within a home comfortably and it works well. Yeah. So we're basically ready for the future guys. And when you're setting up your home network or you're setting up a new home, try to make sure that whoever's doing the wiring, the structured wiring in your house to go with cat six. Absolutely. Yeah. Wiring, wiring is very important. If a home or a business is properly wired, then most issues can be resolved through equipment very simply. But if a home or business is not properly wired, you're talking about a whole different animal. You have real, real trouble because then you have to retrofit wires and whatnot. Right. So tell me more about the network that we set up in here and why it was necessary to do the kind of bandwidth that we're doing. Is it because we're streaming high quality audio and we just want stability with the Control 4 integration for a smart home? Sure. Well, like my 11 year old daughter says, Wi-Fi is life. So it's very important, um, especially in an installation like yours, where we have a network that's very stable mm -hmm. um, so that it's not breaking all the time. You're not having to reboot it constantly. 
something that has a lot of uh, connectivity, a lot of pass through. So we can send surveillance cameras to it. Um, we can make adjustments on it. We can, we can bolster the security on it. Um, and it handles a lot of speed through gigabit switches and, and the gigabit router that we put in here. And also the access points use the new wireless AC format, which is five gigahertz versus the old 2.4. It's much faster than, than the old format with 2.4. However, five gigahertz has a limitation on range. It's not nearly as powerful. Back in the day, you would have a, a, a wireless router in most moderate sized homes. It would cover most of the house and work pretty good. Right. Just the speeds weren't all that great. Now with AC, you get a lot faster speed, but the range is, is substantially limited on it. So now we have to deploy access points to multiple locations to really achieve that coverage. Yeah. And you know, a testament to what they've done with my home network is um, when I was on my laptop prior to doing this network, the best kind of speeds I was getting wirelessly was like 50 meg. And now I've run tests, I'm doing like 120, 130 meg constantly. A lot faster. It's unbelievable actually. So now I can actually do my AudioHawks work wirelessly from a laptop and upload videos to YouTube and it's just, it's a breeze. It, what you have is more what you would find in an office building um, where you have multiple access run, points running. That's ideal if you can do it in your home because it's very stable and there's hardwired to, air, to all the access points in different areas. It's gonna give you the best speed and the best coverage. However, not everybody can do that. So there are products available now, like the Mesh Network. I know Google's a real popular, it's considered mm -hmm. one of the better ones, where you plug in modules at different points in the home and they use this Mesh Network technology to distribute it. However, that's somewhat limited. It's not at the same caliber of an enterprise grade system, mean build quality. Like the Google systems, a couple hundred bucks with multiple units on it. Uh, a really well done system like we did in your house is anywhere from three to four, five thousand dollars. Right. So it's a lot more expensive. Yeah. Well, you know, we are doing a lot in this house and you're going to be seeing uh, videos coming forward as well with when we're done with the install. But if you think about it, in this house alone, we've got three home theaters and we've got five distributed uh, zones of audio. Right. And we're streaming everything high quality. We're doing Tidal, which goes to 192 kilohertz, 24 bit. and it's awesome. I mean, I could just literally take my handheld um, device or even my smartphone, open up the Control 4 app, select what room I want to listen to, select if I want to listen to Tidal, Pandora, TuneIn, whatever you want to do. And it's just, it's really nice. And it's nice that the network is stable and I'm not having to reboot it and, you know. And that's just in your electronics alone. When you have streaming devices, your video receivers have it now. Mm -hmm. um, now let's talk about what your kids use. You know, how many phones, how many pads do you have in the house? How many toys do you have that use Wi-Fi? Does your security system use Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi truly is the heartbeat of the modern home. Um, and a system like what we put in your house is just immensely capable. Right. Doesn't mean it's right for everybody because it's cost prohibitive, but when you're doing a full-blown automation system with multiple surround systems, distributed audio, and the normal needs of the American family, it's, 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 it's pretty powerful. Right. Well, we're ready for the future. Um, we're going to be doing more videos like this. Um, if you guys want us to cover any particular applications for smart home integration or security or anything like that, give us some ideas down below the video on the in the comments. Don does this stuff for a living, so he's got some useful characteristics. Yeah, Twenty-seven years yeah. I've done this, so yeah. we we do a lot of high-end homes, a lot of different systems, a lot of commercial jobs, and I'm a nerd. Like Gene, we were debating. Don't speak, Star don't speak for me. We were, we were debating Star, Star Trek earlier. But anyways, um, so, so there's a lot of things that, and, and something you may have something you're interested in, I don't know anything about, and I'll research it and find out. Mm -hmm. But we do this every day. So we look at products a little different. Most people buy a product either online or from a review, and they just assume that certain things are all the same, meaning the quality level or the, the longevity or how it's made based on some specs of performance. And that's not really always the case. When we approach a job, we look at reliability, um, flexibility, something that's gonna last, like the switches that we're using in this house weigh 18 pounds, like an amplifier. I mean, yeah. they're really well made and they're gonna hold up. A lot of these products that you, consumer-based products, stuff you buy on Amazon, just aren't really that good. Right. A lot of the do-it-yourself stuff really isn't that good. They're sold and marketed, obviously, as, as an end-all product, and they work great on the literature, but they don't always work so good. And, and Audioholics, besides all the amazing reviews of audio speakers and tests over the years, we're going to try to expand things out now to cover um, devices and, and cameras and surveillance and doorbells and, and, and outdoor lights and various different things that are all 
part of the technology umbrella in the modern home. You know, I was just thinking what we have this great network set up and I was just thinking to myself, what happens when you have power outages? What kind of backup do you do? And how do you access this network remotely if you're not at home? Well, like that, that's a good question. Um, one of the great things about the package system through Control 4 that we put in here is it has an ecosystem built into it um, that's called a backpack. And it's really cool. What that does is it allows you to remotely in the cloud uh, control, you can update your system, you can do basic maintenance, basic changes, both from home and, and when you're away. And it also has surge protectors that are also uh, enabled with this backpack system. So what we can even do is besides rebooting and, and, and doing self-healing, which I'll explain, is if say you have a cable box or a product that needs to be rebooted and you don't want to climb in your rack and do it, or your integrator, you call him on a Saturday night, you've had a couple bourbons, not that that ever happens, but, <laughs> and, and it's not working and you need to get it done. He can hit a button on his phone, reboot that product. And as we all know, reboot solve 99% of the problems out there. Mm -hmm. The self-healing is great. And that's another thing that you're getting with this, with this particular system that you have is it will constantly self-diagnose the system. If it addresses a problem with an access point or what, anything in the system, it'll actually go ahead and automatically reboot it, or you can reboot it manually. Great feature to have. A lot of times we can actually have it ping the ISP modem slash router that it provides, because we all know those things hang up from time to time, right. and it'll ping the system, and we can program it to a certain amount of pings are returned back to automatically use that surge protector, the smart surge protector, to reboot it. That's powerful. I mean, that's truly automation. Is this thing gonna become self-aware like Skynet? Is this going to be, so you'll, am you'll I going to flip a switch and this is going to be judgment your motorcycle. day? motorcycle. Probably. <laughs> oh Elon God. Musk warned us. So, That's true. You know, I'm ready for the zombies, man. Oh my goodness. You guys better be well armed and ready for this because if this network gets as advanced as we armed. think, yeah, we're going to be in trouble. Probably. Probably. I think we should, you know what we're talking about doing is movie reviews. Yeah. Like, like from an audio video connoisseur and just good action, you know, so you go to Rotten Tomatoes, you love the movie and it's got a, what, a 47, you know, that sucks. So maybe we'll just do cool guy reviews, maybe. Yeah, and we'll focus on the audio quality, especially because we are audioholics. We are audioholics. It's good to have good Atmos mixes. It's hard to find good uh, Good theaters, material. reviews yeah. of theaters. True. So that's another topic for another day. So guys, why don't you give us some questions down below? Tell us how you like this video. Share it if you like it. Uh, and I know I'm not Hugo, so yeah. I'm gonna try my best. I'm, yeah. I'm working out. Yeah, and uh, don't forget, we have a Patreon channel, guys. If you join and subscribe to our Patreon, you will get features that the regular AudioHawks subscribers do not. So check that out. And guys, until next time, keep, keep listening. listening. Really? Yeah, you shut up. Just shut the, the f up. Lightning's in a strike right now here. Yeah. Oh, is it recording?